We're going to be talking about the state of the team after the Emmanuel Moutier trade. How is Moutier playing? How does he look? How is the team doing playing around Moutier? He is the starting point guard. What does our second unit look like? I'm thinking about using a small ball lineup. What does this mean for some of the guys who are at the end of the rotation already? Uh, we are a very guard-heavy team now. Our front court is very thin. It's, the Moutier trade just changes a lot of aspects about the team. First, I want to talk about how Moutier has been playing. It's only been a couple games, but I'm already seeing some things that I really like from him. I like how big and athletic he is. He's at the point guard position being 6'5", 200 pounds. He's bigger than almost any of the opposing guards that are going to be guarding him or he's going to be guarding. And there's just a few. You'll probably see one, one play in this game where he just, everyone's spread out. He's one-on-one -on -one with the point guard. He gets around him. They have to collapse. He kicks the ball out to Nawaba, and Nawaba drains the three. And that's just, that's what I love to see. That's kind of how I want him to play, just be able to do that. And then when you run the pick and roll, he's even better at just getting to the hoop with his size and speed. He's just got, he's from that John Wall, Russell Westbrook school of being too athletic for the point guard position. I love Mounier's ability to just be able to grab a rebound with his size and strength, push it up the court. If you've got shooters around him, he can either go to the hole, put it in with his physical ability, and he's also a really good playmaker. He can kick it out to people. He's got, on defense, he's got very good size and strength. He can switch on to a bigger defender and hold his own. He's also very good at guarding the point guards. He's got quick enough feet that he can stay with them. Some things that I don't like that Moutier does that we're just going to have to work on on defense. Sometimes he'll just get lazy, kind of not really play defense, but a lot of these young guys do that. Russell tends to do that. Sometimes they can be a good defender when they want to be, but sometimes they just forget. And on offense, he really likes to post up the smaller opposing guards, but he doesn't have any, any moves. He can't shoot from the post, so it's just ineffective. The only way that it really works is if he's posting up the smaller guard up to the hoop and they have to come help, and then he can use his playmaking, and he's a really good passer and kick it out to a shooter. I, that, that works, but there's so many times where he posts up and then he just does like a fadeaway shot, and it's just not a good shot, and he never makes any of them. His outside shot and his mid-range are both iffy. I knew that coming in. But I really think if he just works on it more, now he's got every single day to work on it. I've got him in the gym shooting mid-range threes. Eventually, he'll get it down. I'm very confident that eventually he'll be able to knock down a mid-range and that he'll be a solid three-point shooter. I don't know if he'll ever be great, a great three-point shooter, but I think that we can rely on him if he's wide open to knock down the three eventually if we make sure he puts the time in and he stays dedicated to it. So as I told you guys in the last video, our starting lineup is Moutier at the 1, Russell at the 2, Ingram at the 3, Randall at the 4, and Mozgov at the 5. The starting lineup has been playing really solid. Mozgov is a really good screen setter for Moutier or Russell. I've kind of let Moutier and Russell both bring the ball up. Moutier a little more just to get adjusted because Russell's a better catch and shoot player. He can really catch and shoot the 3, which Moutier can't do, so he's got to handle the ball more. Ingram is, um, he's kind of... He's weird. On offense, he's very slow-footed, struggles handing the ball, can't really get around people. He hasn't been the shooter that people expected him to be right out of college. He's really struggled shooting, but defensively, he's been solid. So he's kind of, he's a good defensive player right now, but he's struggling on the offensive end, which is interesting to me because a lot of rookies can score, but they can't play defense. Ingram's the other way around, but with all his offensive potential, if eventually he can find his his stroke he could be really dangerous Randall's driving me crazy I know in the game you guys are watching he's having a really good game but lately he is just he's not even been hitting the mid-range which is what he's he's usually able to hit and he's just he he's wide open at the three and he cannot get it down I've just got him in the gym keep practicing all his training is set to mid-range and three he just can't get the three down right now I'm crossing my fingers that he can because Right now what's happening is you run the pick and pop and he pops and Moutier goes to the hole. They double team Moutier. So then he's got to kick it to Randall and they, they don't come help on Randall. They stay home and then Randall's got a wide open three and he misses. And it just makes it so difficult because I think there's a few times where Mozgov comes and sets the good pick, comes and sets a good pick. And then Mozgov's a solid mid-range shooter. So they have to, one of them stays home on Mozgov. And Mugia gets a one-on-one -on -one to the hoop, and if he gets that slight step on you, Mugia is going to take it and probably make the shot if he gets the good look. So Randall's missing is just really killing us right now, but if he can start knocking it down, that'll fix everything. Just kind of worry about if he if he will start knocking it down. So Because it's been the whole season, and he's still struggling, although it, he's got time to really work on it. 
So that's kind of how the starting unit is looking. As for the bench, this is where things get kind of crazy because we've got a ton of guards. We've got Jordan Clarkson, Nawaba, Hillard, Monte Ellis, Tyler Ennis, and then at the small forward, we've got Antetokounmpo, World Peace, Papa Nicolau, and Brewer. Brewer, Papa Nicolau, and Ennis. Well, Brewer and Papa Nicolau have been at the bottom of the bench. They're really not going to play much. That's going to stay the same. One guy I feel really bad for is Tyler Ennis because he was playing really good as I was talking about. He had really earned that second um, that second unit point guard position. And then Moutier becomes available and now he's just completely doesn't get any minutes bottom of the bench. I'm not really sure what to do about him if we should release him and let him. He could go to a bad team and they might pick him up with what he's shown with us. He could go to another team struggling and maybe be the backup point guard there or if we should hold on to him. The problem is if I release him, it's going to use the um, cap smoothing option, and it's going to cut his contract in half, even though it's a small contract, and then we're going to be paying some of it next year. But it would be nice because we are thin at the power forward. Randall's playing a ton to cut Ennis and get a power forward there. Not sure. At the small forward, Meta World Peace and Alton Tacumbo are there. Both of them got some playing time. With the second half of the season coming, we know we're not making the playoffs. I really want to see what I have deep in the bench for next year. Metal World Peace actually knocked down a few threes, played solid defense at the power forward position. We've only got three bigs, so him and Alton Tacumbo could be playing some at the power forward. Peace is probably retiring at the end of this year, I assume. I'm not sure how old he is, but he's getting up there. He's actually 37, so this is kind of his last year. I want to let him get some playing time before he goes out of the league. I'm assuming he's retiring. Maybe he'll stay for another year. I think if he stayed, or I think if he stays in the NBA for another year, it'd be cool to see him go to a contending team. Then we picked up Monte. So then going on to all these shooting guards, this is really going to be a struggle to get all these guys time. I think Hillard's kind of the odd man out because. He's looked at as a shooter, but his shooting is awful. He, he's gotten a few minutes in the games I think you guys have seen. it. His shots just do not look good at all. They're everywhere just clanking off. He plays solid defense, but he can't shoot at all. And when I've got a guy in David Nawaba who's really shooting the three good right now and plays lockdown defense, I'm more inclined to play him over him. Monte Ellis is the big contract we took back for Dang and not really known for his three-point shooting. But if, if there's any shot of maybe getting him off next year, for a team that wants a scoring wing, we've got to keep him in the rotation, give him minutes. And then Clarkson is that third younger guard with Moutier and Russell. He's not very happy about the Moutier trade. Things aren't looking good with him. I think he might want to go. We'll see about that. He's The trade deadline is not here yet. We're like three days away from it or something. He's not going to go now. I'm definitely going to keep him for the rest of this year. But in the offseason, things don't look good for him. Moving on to our bigs, we really really only have three in Randall, Mozgov, and Zubach. So Mozgov and Randall start. And then I'm going to get into a small ball lineup with Randall at the center soon here. And then Zubach comes off the bench right now. Right now, Randall pretty much plays like the whole first. Mozgov comes out, Zubach comes in. With Nance gone, it really opens up a lot of time for these three. But at the same time, it leaves a big hole because these guys there's always two of them on the floor like randall's been dead at the end of the games when i've really needed him the past couple games so i've got to figure out a way to give them rest so they're good at the end of the game that's why i've been that's why in this game i tried metal world peace at the four because i feel like he can guard the opposing force for short amount of short for short periods of time so that randall can get rest and be ready for the stretch run at the end of the games I also tried a lineup of Mozgov and Zubach against the Bucks in this game. The Bucks put in John Henson and Tyson Chandler, and they just ate both of them up. I had to take them out pretty quick. I think I tried it in the second half for a couple minutes. It got eaten up again, too. I think if they were playing a team that didn't have two centers like that, it might be a little more effective. I want to try it a little bit, you know, kind of like the when the Thunder put in Adams and Cantor together, see if it works because both of them can post up and both of them can hit the mid-range shot, so it could work. And defensively, Mozgov makes up for Zubac's struggles. Of course, I'm not going to run it a lot. It's not going to. It's just kind of something I want to try the rest of this year. The last thing that I want to talk about is our new small ball lineup. It goes Moutier at the 1, Russell at the 2, Nawaba at the 3, Ingram at the 4, Randall at the 5. I think it gives us the ability to switch everywhere. I think it's a good mix of defense and offense and I think there's enough shooting and ball handling in it. 
This is mainly for when other teams go small because that's where the league is going. When the power forwards go down to center, the small forwards shift down, you play three guards. That's really what we're doing. I think with with Nawaba, Russell, Moutier, Randall, even Ingram, they're all solid defenders. Randall shooting kind of hurts the lineup. But if you have Randall set the pick and roll, if you say Moody is running it, you still got Russell, Ingram, and Nawaba out there. A lot of it depends on Nawaba shooting too because he's playing the small forward. And if he can if he can spread out the small forward and they can't help, that really helps. And on defense, Nawaba is very effective, so that's good. I really like the small ball lineup. I think it closes the game in this Milwaukee against Milwaukee in this video. Uh, I forget how it does in this video. I've played some other games where it's been very effective. When when it's working and Randall's shooting and everyone's spread out, it's good. Defensively, they can all switch. I think it can be very effective. This is something that I want to really, I want to play this lineup a lot and see how they do. I think this could be our small ball lineup of the future, especially with the NBA going small. This this could be our lineup. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. We're about three days away from the trade deadline, so I'm assuming in the next video we'll be past the trade deadline. I'm assuming there's gonna be some trades, so I'll definitely let you guys know about what goes on around the league. I think think we're pretty much done i really just want to play this deep team the rest of the season and see which guys are keepers and which guys are not that's kind of my goal is play everybody try all different kinds of lineups put everybody in different positions just see how they play on defense all that kind of stuff and the next video we'll look at the rest of the league and all the trades that have been made because we should be past the deadline and maybe maybe i'm thinking soon we got to start talking about the draft because we are at about the halfway we're close to the all-star game so about the halfway mark of the season we got to kind of do a quick look ahead to then eventually when we do get to the draft we're prepared because we right now we are towards the bottom of the league not sure if we're going to get our pick or not that's going to come down to the lottery it it'll definitely help if we finish in the top three but you really never know so that's going to wrap it up for this video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next